Leviticus 11, here you've got the list of clean and unclean animals, and they're told that this list of unclean animals were the animals that were to be unclean to you. To you they are to be unclean. Paul says there is nothing unclean of itself. And the fact that when the Lord Jesus died, the difference between clean and unclean animals was ended, as it was shown by the vision given to Peter, that, I think, indicates that these animals were not actually unclean of themselves. And Paul says that. There is nothing unclean of itself. They were to be unclean to you. So why, then, were Israel given this distinction between clean and unclean? I suggest it was as a teaching mechanism to get them to see in daily life that there must be a clear division between the clean and the unclean. This is taught all the way through the Bible. You take the Genesis account of creation. Light was separated from darkness. The waters were separated from the dry land. This clear-cut separation of light and darkness, of clean and unclean. And this whole thing with the clean and unclean animals was to teach them. A daily reminder in life as they went through it, I must recognise the difference between what God calls clean and what he calls unclean. I suggest that many of our sins are the result of failing to make that separation. Instead of seeing black and white, we see so many shades of grey. Ah, it's difficult, we say. For example, you may catch yourself gossiping about somebody to someone else, let's say, in church. But at the time, you're thinking, well, yeah, this is gossip, but it's actually, uh, yeah, I'm doing this because I, uh, I actually love this person I'm talking to, and they, they need to know. And later you're convicted of your sin and you, you realise, yeah, I just gossiped. They didn't need to know all that. I just gossiped. And we fell into that sin because we failed to see clean, unclean, light, darkness, ultimately no shade of grey in that sense. I'm not saying that moral issues are necessarily all black and white. There's all sorts of nuances when it comes to interpreting God's law. But ultimately, in spiritual terms, do what is right and do not do that which is wrong. And once you move away from that ethic, that most basic ethic, you get into shades of grey and you end up sinning. So keep the separation clear. 